Hey guys, I'm Drago and do you ever sit there trying to get on with your day and then all you can think about is food? I was like that yesterday. And so when I was scrolling and came across this amazing watermelon raptor, I mean, oh my God, yes, watermelon, give me that right now. And then I got an attack from this person and they had another food related character. Like, look at those cupcakes. Oh my God, I need them. And then I came across this little fella who, uh, well, I don't actually like sardines, but they were really cute anyway. So that's the premise for today's video, three food related characters. Let's get going. So we're starting off with this lovely lady. Her name is Bebby and they're from Especially Q Here. Now, those of you who know me know that this really isn't my normal kind of style. I mean, I don't draw characters like this, like at all. <laughs> I'm very much more sort of into the dark, gritty side of things. I prefer darker characters, darker environments, darker themes. I'm not into this sort of bright, colorful, I mean, no, that's not true. I like colours. Like, you put black with any sort of neon colour, that looks amazing. But in terms of like this sort of pink palette, not my sort of thing. However, this person did an amazing attack towards me on Art Fight. They drew this really cool headshot of one of my dragons, Acacia. And all their characters were sort of mostly humans or human-like characters. If you know me, I also cannot draw humans. So I eventually chose Bebby here. Now, Bebby is a chinchilla, which is why I've got a chinchilla reference on my canvas right here. It took me a while to get the head how I wanted it. Like I said, this sort of anthropomorphic, well, furry character is not the sort of thing I usually draw. Not that I have anything against them, like you do you, I don't really care at all. Generally, I do like this character design, it is a nice design, it's just not my cup of tea. My personal opinion is that I'm not a fan of these sort of cutesy, squishy designs. I am in certain things, like, I don't know, a cute chubby little dinosaur, I love that. <laughs> but uh, things like this, not my kind of thing. But that's just art, really. Art is a very subjective matter and everyone has their own opinions. This is just my personal opinion, this is not my of style. However, I must say, it was actually quite fun to draw this character. It was a good test, it was putting me out of my comfort zone, which is always good to help you improve. So I just dived right in and went for it. the anatomy ended up pretty decent could be better but it wasn't worse so moving on to the lines i was quite confident that i could just follow my sketch really closely In saying that, there is a bit of the character that I completely missed. You know, this whole time I had been looking at her thinking, what looks weird? Something looks weird, but I could not figure it out. Until I zoomed out, looked at the reference and realised I forgot her hair. <laughs> One of the biggest parts of my character design and I completely forgot to add it on. So what I did is I made a new layer where I just sketched out the shape of the hair. And then I lined over that and merged it onto my normal line art layer. Definitely made her look a lot better for her to actually have her hair. <laughs>
Now, when I have a lighter colored character, I tend to not use overlay layers for the shading. This is because overlay layers don't do very well in light tones. You can see it, but it's very, very hard to see. I tend to use a shade or shade and shine layer for this. Maybe even a multiplier layer in some instances. However, on this one, I did have a look at the overlay layer to see what it would look like. And I felt like the subtle sort of shade really worked well for this one. It kept it looking nice and bright, which I feel like was the essence of this character. One thing I did notice though, is while it worked well on most of the tones of the character, there are a couple of areas that it was too dark and that was on the ears and the plate. So when I moved on to my more refined shading, I did those on a different layer. That way I could edit the opacity separately and make sure it all looked good. With some final touches such as whiskers, she was all done. This next character is called, well, Sardine. That's their name, they're basically a cute little can of sardines. And they're from Yay Zuri. For this one, I just did a really rough sketch. I mean, it didn't need to be that detailed. The character is quite a simple little character. It's mainly just making sure the sort of perspective and 3D-ness was all right. Now, I was just going to do my normal solid lining and coloring for this, but when I was looking at the reference, I really liked the painterly style. So I decided to try that one out. So I took my paintbrush, made it textured and started lining. I wanted it to be sketchy and sort of, you know, this more hand-drawn, you know, painted texture. But it looked awful. So I deleted it and started again. This time I blocked in the shapes with colour before going onto the lines. But once again, it looked awful. So I went back to doing the lines first. I still felt it looked absolutely awful, but I thought, you know what? Trust the process, keep going, we'll see what happens. Once I'd got the lines in, I started putting in the colour. I made the colour solid at first, but then used my paintbrush to sort of blend in the edges a little bit. Give it that sort of more painted look. Once I'd got the colour in, I realised that yeah, this was the way to go. It looks so much better now. Once I got the flat colour in, I moved on to my watercolour brush. This brush is a bit more opacity to it and makes it much easier to blend. And I use this to add some sort of basic shading in. It just lets it pop a little bit more and gives it more of a 3D look. For the background, I mimicked these little fish shapes that are on the reference. I thought they were really cute, so I made them, copied them, put them in a sort of grid pattern, and then copied the colours to have this nice pattern in the background. I also gave each fish an, I also gave each fish an outline glow. I did this by duplicating the layer, putting it underneath, putting that layer on a hard mix, which makes it glow, and then blowing them out slightly. Once done, I cropped my canvas, added a drop shadow, and we were all good.
This next character took me the longest out of any of the artifact attacks I've done so far. This year, that is, because, uh, you know, looking at that huge suck I did, it took me literal weeks. <laughs> this character is called Mello, and he's from Grim Yokai. So with this being a bit more of a complicated pose with the perspective I was going for, where he's turning his head, but his body's looking the other way, I need to make sure I had that shape right. So unlike the last two pieces, I went in with some rough construction lines. After that, I did my first sketch. Now I say my first because I actually did two sketches for this one. Sometimes when I do an art piece, I do the first sketch and I think, eh, not 100% liking it. Quite often I'll like the pose, I'll like the idea, I'll like, you know, the sort of the concept, but I don't like how I've drawn it. So if I decide this while doing a sketch, I then start doing the sketch much more roughly. That way I've got a more detailed guide than my construction lines, and I can go over and just refine it even more in another part of a sketch. I do this a lot with my FNAF pieces actually. Quite often I'll draw it out and I absolutely hate how it's looking and I'll draw it out again and again and again until I get it how I want it. One of the pieces I did, which is this one where Spindrap is in chains, I think I did about five or six passes of a sketch before I was happy with it. So yeah, that's a tip I can give you. If you're not happy with how your sketch is looking, then just keep going, rough it out, and then do another sketch again to refine it even further. Once happy with the sketch of the character and the little stage they're standing on, I went on to lines. Now, I didn't do much of my normal sort of line weight variation here. Don't get me wrong, line weight variation is incredibly important. It is a great way to make your lines pop a lot more. However, as I was drawing this one, it just didn't occur. I just didn't do it. Quite often, the line weight variation comes naturally to me. I will just do it as I'm going. But in this one, I felt like it didn't really need it, I guess and I made that unconscious decision not to do it. Now, line and fur is one of my absolute favorite things to do. It is so satisfying just to swipe the line and have that gorgeous tuft of fur come out, just like it's magic. And it always looks so nice when it's done. And you can really do so much with fur like this. You can make it look thin, you can make it look really fluffy. It's just really, really fun to do. It's one of my favorite things to do in art. I used a line work layer for the watermelons. Now some of you are probably looking at that little shape option over there and thinking, why didn't I just use that? Why didn't I just make a circle with it? Now there are two reasons for that. One, with Sai, when you make a circle using the shape tool, that circle is filled in, it's not an outline. And there's not really any way to erase the feel of the circle. Two, I feel like it was a lot more organic to do it by hand. You know, watermelons are a natural thing. They're not this solid, uniform, perfect sphere. They'll have a few bumps to them, they'll have a few dents to them, they'll have some warping. It's just natural. It looks a lot more natural. Now, as much as I absolutely adore the design of this character, I always regretted it a little bit at this point. Their patterns were so kind of complicated. Like, at first glance, they look fine. But when you're trying to do them, when you're trying to draw them in, especially when you're out of perspective that isn't the same as the reference, it starts to get really complicated. It was the dark green stripes that were confusing me. And I think I got them fairly decent. Uh, I just want to say to the person, if they are watching this, I'm really sorry if I got it wrong. I just found it really difficult to do. 
Also halfway through colouring, I realised I totally forgot a part of their design, once again. I seem to be good at forgetting parts of designs on characters at the moment. It was the little speaker on their legs, so I added that in. When colouring the watermelons, I made sure to go for many different sorts of shades of green. But it was also important to get some more yellowy shades in there, because if you look at the reference, you can see the leaves and parts of the watermelon have this yellow shade to them. Once again, it just gives it a much more natural look. While doing all this, I made sure to make use of preserve opacity. Now, what this does is it makes sure that whenever you draw on that layer, you cannot go outside of what is on the layer. So say you make a circle and you put preserve opacity on, anything you draw will be on that circle. It will never go outside the circle. Very useful little tool. I mainly use this when it came to doing the stripes on the watermelon because on some parts the stripes are darker, on some parts they're lighter. So I just use the layer to draw in the stripes and then I use preserve opacity to change and blend in the tones as needed. For the grass, I use my usual scatter brush. I use different shades and sizes and I sort of fluffed out the edges as well to really give it this idea that it's a patch of grass that this raptor is stood in. I decided to give the watermelons a bit of shade in first. Doing this allowed me to get an idea of how the lighting was going to go. I ended up doing my usual though, which is the light coming from the top left. So using a sort of yellowy, greeny shade, I did that on the Raptor as well. When it came to the refined shading, I had to use a shade layer rather than an overlay layer. Like I explained when I was doing Beppy, the tones with an overlay don't work so well when they're on a lighter colour. Here I definitely needed the shade layer to make this shading show up properly. However, overlay worked great for the highlights. It gave this really nice shine to areas. When done with the shading, I felt like it was a little too harsh and it didn't really fit the theme very well. So I used the Gaussian Blur Fill to just slightly soften it. And with that being done, this guy was all ready. And that's it. That's three Food Rater characters. All three of these were really fun to draw. In all three of them, I stepped out of my comfort zone in some way. For Beppy, I really don't draw characters in that style often. For Sardine, I went for a more painted style with a brush I like never use. And for Meadow, I went with such a complex design and anatomy I don't normally draw that it was so fun to just experiment with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you did, leave a like, maybe consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.